Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome back to the Introduction to Elixir tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at the real gen server module that's shipped with Elixir and the Beam platform. So if you remember in the last video we implemented our own generic server. This has a lot of the features that gen server has and it's actually implemented in a very similar way to gen server. But when you really get down to it, it isn't complete. And it also isn't efficient to have to re-implement this pattern in every application that you create that needs it. And this is why Gen Server is included as a part of the OTP platform. In fact, there are abstractions like agents that work over top of the Gen Server abstraction. Here I have a nice little diagram of the lifecycle of a Gen Server. On the left side here, we have the client side. These are functions that we can call from outside of the Gen Server process. And then on the right side, we have the server side, which are functions that get called inside of the gen server process. In our last video, we showed how you can just call gen server start to start the process. And what this does is it initiates gen server init, which then calls to the init callback, which then sets up the state inside of the gen server. You can also call a function called start link, and then this adds a link between the two processes. And what this link does is it allows the gen server process to proliferate its errors back to its parent process. So if I create a gen server with the IEX terminal with start link, then the gen server crashes, then the IEX terminal will also crash. This concept is important and it will become more apparent later when we talk about supervisors. After we have our gen server initiated with the init callback, gen server just kind of goes into a loop and it waits for incoming messages. There are three different ways to directly call to a gen server. We can use gen server cast, which is the asynchronous way of calling to the gen server. This means that once we call to the gen server, it just kind of goes through and then we don't really get a response back. And of course, cast then corresponds with the handle cast callback. Then there's gen server call, which is a normal synchronous call. So this goes through the gen server loop and it initiates the handle call callback. And then of course you can just call send, which is the basic way to send a message to a process. And any messages that come through send or any other means get handled with a callback function called handle info. So if, for instance, we get some kind of error message or maybe we've set up our system to send some kind of timer message through our various processes, the handle info function would be the function that would deal with these particular messages. Then if for whatever reason our gen server fails, maybe it throws back an error or maybe the user has it shut down, it'll call to this terminate function to clean everything up. Let's go ahead and take our task server module, which we implemented last time with the generic server module that we built, and actually add gen server to this instead. And we'll be able to see the differences between these functions and the ones that we create with the real gen server module. So to mark a module as a gen server, you want to use a keyword called use, and then you want to follow it by the name gen server, which is the module. This tells the Elixir environment that this module will act like a gen server. And what that's essentially telling us is that it's injecting this function here, def init, init arg do, okay arg init, into the module by default because we do not have an implementation of the callback function init1 in our current module. And gen server needs that function to actually work. All right, so now let's rewrite our start function. So I'm gonna rewrite it with start link, though you could use start as well if you don't want a link between the parent process and your task server. So you can see here that start link is very similar to our start function. We just pass in the module name, and then we've also got this extra set of arguments that we're passing in. And in our case, these arguments are empty. But if we wanted to initialize our server with some kind of data structure, or maybe add some kind of helper data to our process, then we would pass it in here. Now these arguments 
get passed to the callback on the server side. So we have the init callback like we did in our original implementation. And instead of taking nothing, it takes in one single argument, which are the arguments. Now, because we're not going to be using those arguments, we want to make them anonymous so that we do not get a warning. And then we're just going to pass back a tuple of OK. And then we want to call the function that we're going to use to initialize our state. And in this case, it's just task list dot new. Now, also, when you're creating the start link function, there's a special atom that you can pass in called module with two underscores surrounding it. And this module atom takes the place of the module name that you're calling this function inside of. And the main reason why you'd use this is if you had a really long module name, which is actually pretty common inside of Elixir. So oftentimes it's easier and more idiomatic to use underscore underscore module underscore underscore. All right, so now let's create our add task function. And the function definition will be exactly the same as our original function, where we just pass in the server ID and then the new entry that we want to add. And in fact, the cast call, genserver.cast, is going to take in the same arguments as our generic server.cast call did. So we just call genserver.cast, pass in the server ID, and then we pass in the message that we want to pass to our callback. And in this case, we just want to pass to the callback that we're adding a task and follow it up with the new entry that we want to put into the list. Also, our handle cast function will be very similar to the one that we created here as well. We have the tuple of the add entry message and then the new entry that we're adding to our list. And then we have this state which is being maintained in this generic server. The main difference here though is the return statement. So rather than just calling task list add task and passing in our task list and our new entry, we want to create a tuple and pass back an atom of no reply, followed by our call to task list add task. And of course, I've named our state state, but it's literally the same thing as the task list variable. So I can just pass in the state as the task list and then pass in our new entry. This no reply atom is necessary because it essentially just tells the gen server not to return a reply to the caller. In our case, it'll be the IEX terminal. And when we call the add task message to our gen server, it will not return any kind of information to us. And that's mainly done because this is a cast call, which means that it's asynchronous. And so getting back the proper information is not guaranteed. Get tasks is also going to be very similar to our get tasks function from before. We call gen server dot call with our server process ID and then a tuple of get tasks as the message and then the date as the data that we're passing into the process. Our handle call callback though is a little bit different from the one that we created with our generic server. Rather than taking in two arguments, it takes in three arguments. It takes in the tuple of the message and the data. Then it also has this from variable and then it also has our state. The from variable is the process ID of the caller and we could potentially use this to send another message back to the caller as a sort of response. But in our case, we're not going to do that and instead we're just going to send back the result of calling get tasks. Again, the return statement is going to be different from our original handle call callback. We want to add an atom to the front of the tuple and we want to put in an atom of reply to tell the process that we're going to reply with the result of the second argument. So we pass in the atom of reply, then we're going to call task list get tasks, pass in our state, and then pass in the date. And then this will return any tasks that have that specific date. And we're also just going to pass our state back into the process because it's not being altered in this call. If we wanted to change the state of our gen server when we were calling a handle call callback, we would change it in the third value of the tuple. While we're doing all of this, let's add another function to our task list module, which will allow us to just see all of the entries in our task list. 
So we'll just call this get all. We'll pass in the task list that we want to see, and then we'll just have it return the task list dot entries. In our gen server process, we can create a get all call, and we're going to use call instead of cats because we want a return and we want it to be synchronous. For this function, we only need to pass in the server ID, so we'll make this a single arity function. And then our gen server call will not get a tuple as its message, but just an atom. Again, we want to follow the pattern of our other handle call callback. So we have the message, which is just our atom of get all. Then we have our from variable, which we're not going to use. And then we have the state of our process. And the return of this function is pretty basic. We're just going to return a tuple of reply task list all with the state inside of it. And then we want to put the state back into our process. So we'll put the state as the third value of this tuple. And I guess we should also implement the update task functionality into our gen server as well. And if you remember our update task function takes in two arguments and then it calls to a three arity version of the update task function down here to update our tasks. So update task will take in the server process ID and then the entry and then we'll call gen server cast because we want this to be asynchronous. We'll pass in the server ID and then we'll pass in a tuple of update task and the entry. The callback is really simple. We just pass in our message with the data. So update task entry. And then of course we pass in the state and then we're going to call no reply and then call task list update task with the state and the entry inside of it. As we saw in the lifecycle chart, we also have a handle info callback function that we can implement. And I mentioned that the handle info callback function can handle any other type of message that we receive in our gen server process that isn't defined as a call or a cast or isn't explicitly defined. And so we can use this to essentially create what is essentially an error handler. So basically we're just saying if we get a message that doesn't match with any of the messages up here, then take in that message and then take in the state call IO inspect invalid message and then put the message in there so that we can see what the message was. And then of course, because handle info is asynchronous and non blocking, we'll call no reply and then we'll put our state back into our process. If I want to, I can make it so that our process will send a message to itself in the init callback. I'll use the send function for this and I'll use the self function to get the process ID of this current process. And then I'll just send in a message of process in it. And then down here I can create another handle info callback and have it match on the message that we're sending in, which is just this atom of process in it. And then just have it say task list is ready. All right. So now let's hop into our IEX terminal and see how this works. So I've gone ahead and compiled the project and I now have it running inside of this terminal. When I call task server dot start link, I'm going to match it on a tuple of OK followed by the process ID. Then our little send call sends the message to this process, which then uses the handle info to pass back that the task list is ready. And of course we get OK and our process ID for the gen server. We can see that our get all function works. So if we call get all, we currently just get an empty map because we have no entries in our current state. Let's now go ahead and add a task to our task server. So we'll call task server dot add task. We'll pass in the process ID and then we'll pass in the entry that we want to add. Now, because I called this twice, if we go ahead and call get all, you can see that we get both entries back. Let's go ahead and call update task to change our entry of ID zero to say learn elixir and then have it also have a different date. So now when we call get all, you can see that we now in fact have two distinct entries. And of course we can use our task server dot get tasks 
to get each of our entries by its date. If we want to, we can go and check to see that our error handle info function is working. So the hello message that we've sent in here is not valid and it doesn't really know how to handle it outside of throwing back this string telling us that it's invalid. Let's go ahead and modify our process to have a handle info call which will shut down the process by calling process exit on itself and then calling kill on it. So notice if I put this underneath of this handle info function, we'll get an error because this will never actually match. If we pass in the shutdown message, it will be caught by this function because of the way that the pattern matching happens. So we need to put this function above this other function and this way it will properly match to shutdown. Now, if you want to just recompile a module in your project, you can use a function called R and then you can pass in the module. This way we can reload the module without having to rerun our IEX terminal on the project. Now let's go ahead and kill our process. So I can write send PID comma shutdown and you can see here that we get exit from PID followed by our PID. And then it also says that the shell process exited with reason killed. So by killing our gen server, we also kill our IEX terminal because the two were linked together. And again, we'll go over links more when we start to talk about supervisors. But notice that our IEX terminal restarted itself and we're now at IEX1. And if I type in PID, you can see that there is no PID variable anymore. There is one more thing I want to go over before I finish this tutorial. Generally, when people write a gen server, they mark the client side functions with a little comment above them, and then they also mark the server side functions with a little comment above them. Elixir also has a means of marking functions as the server functions so that we do not actually have to put these comments in here. So I can put at implement gen server above our callback function in it and you can see that now the rest of our callback functions have warnings next to them because they also need to have this little implement annotation above them. Of course the main purpose of adding these little annotations is to just make it clear which functions are callbacks and which functions are client interface functions. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means downvote it as much as you like. If you want to catch any future introduction to Elixir tutorial videos, then I recommend you click that notification bell. Have a good night.